Hello everybody and welcome back to the dig site. Now today I've got a very special video about a Tasmanian devil skull as you can see here. So I'll get this over the place. It's there. This is a really really good replica, but I'm gonna talk about that in a second. First off, I just want to say I know I haven't been uploading like at all lately. Um I have a job now and I have school and it's just it's it's just a whole combination of things. Uh so I really really do apologize for that. Um but yeah, anyway, let's just get into the video. Now, the Tasmanian Devil Skull, this is a really good replica from Bone Clones, um, I believe, I've had this for a long time, I just never did a video about it, I've also got, as you can see, the Nicta Skull, you might recognise that from my older videos, um, which I've deleted, by the way, so don't bother looking for them, <laughs> yeah, the cringiness was just off the chart. Now, this Tasmanian Devil Skull costs about, what is that, $180 in USD, um, which is what, like 200 and... 20 Australian dollars, which is pretty expensive for something of this size, but the detail is really, really exceptional. You can detach the dentaries from the cranium, and um, and also in here, I forgot what they're called. Are they Sinestre? Uh, in here, I'll get it really close up. You can see in there, it's got like these details where the uh, nasal passages would go. That's my dog barking, by the way, and a phone ringing. Now, something I was surprised by is the fact that you can actually see into the uh, the brain cavity in there. Now, this is normally where the um, where the spinal cord would attach and the vertebrae would connect up there to pass the neural messages to the rest of the body. Now, another thing, I've noticed the teeth on this uh, specimen are really, really shiny, and I actually really, I just like looking at its teeth, its canines. I don't, oh, the lighting's not the best, I'm sorry. I'll show some images of it later on, but... Um, that's just about, oh, fucking lamps in the way. Now, I can, there is a bit of a problem, and I've just had it just like if you could tell. It's a bit difficult to slot it back into the dentaries if you're trying to put it on a table. Um, but if you pick up the dentaries first and then slot it in, it becomes a lot easier. But if you put the dentaries, or the, what would do or sorry, I keep calling them dentaries. If you put the dentaries down on the table, and then you try to slot in the cranium, it just, it can be a bit difficult. I just did it there pretty quickly. But another thing that surprised me, because I've never seen the Tasmanian Devil Skull before, uh, is the eye cavities. I forgot what they're called. I apologize. Um, they're actually quite small compared with the rest of the skull. I'll try and like, you can see them there. Now, Tasmanian devils in the wild are actually nocturnal predators, um, and that they're generally scavengers. They're opportunists, as most predators are. So you'd, I'd expect them to have very large eye cavities for that nocturnal style of life, but it, they don't. They, they actually have a quite, quite small ones. And they've got like these little bony phalanges in front of them just sort of sticking out of the eye cavity. I don't know what, what they're for, but um, yeah. Now next up on my list that I'm going to get after this, hopefully, will be the Tasmanian uh, tiger skull, otherwise known as the thylacine, uh, calling it a tiger is not a very accurate uh, form. That light is just illuminating my head, and I just noticed that. I think that should have fixed it now, has it? Yep. Because these two skulls, uh, the Tasmanian, sorry, the Thylacine and the Tasmanian Devil, are very similar. Um, this is the largest marsupial predator in the world, believe it or not. Which is kind of unfortunate, because they used to be a lot larger ones, and because of humans, they're not on the earth anymore. So it is a bit, it is a bit sad knowing that you know the thylacine could still be around if humans hadn't interfered with it. Um, now Tasmanian devils used to live all across Australia, but they were um, wiped out by humans and by uh, changes in the climate and their environments. Now, interestingly, the skull, despite how different it looks to its nicta skull, I'm going to bring the nicta over here now. It's actually very similar. They are both mammals in the end of the day, and. Um, the nictus, because their skull sort of deformed, the fossil when it was uh, being preserved was crushed and morphed, so it doesn't fit into the jaw very well. But um, you can actually look at them and go, oh yeah, you know, this one's got some very similar, it's got the same parietal bone coming across the back of the skull there, it's got the same uh, nasal passages here with the lines down the middle. It's really, really quite similar um, and quite fascinating. You can really show divergent evolution by just looking at skulls. Sit back on there nicely. So yeah, I'm really happy to have this guy. Um, I've actually had it for a long time. Um, it's really, really fascinating to see that. 
Again, apologize for any background sounds. I'm not home alone at the moment, unfortunately. There's work going on. I don't know when that's going to stop. <laughs> uh, I've got the bone clones. I'll try and show it. If you can hear me over that sound, but the bone clones, um, what is this? I guess it's just, it's a catalog, I suppose. It's not like anything else other than that. And I was looking at the uh, marsupial page, the Australian animals, the Australian mammals here. Thylacine there, you've got a, I think, is that a koala? I can't really read the Tasmanian devil that looks like an echidna, maybe, kangaroo, and wombat. And then, of course, the uh, platypus down the bottom there. So my goal is to have a kangaroo at some point, a wombat, a uh, thylacine, and of course I've got the Tasmanian, ty uh, Tasmanian, ty Tasmanian devil here with me. That's really interesting. However, after that, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on fossils. I'm definitely more into paleontology than zoology. Um, the only reason I'm getting this stuff is because, well, frankly, I'm Australian, so I kind of have to do it, you know. Um, some bats. This is actually a really, really good catalogue. I got this from my Denecta skull. I don't think I got one with the Tasmanian Devil. Um, I've had this for a very long time, this Tasmanian Devil skull. So, I don't know, I don't remember, I think... When did I get this? I don't actually know if I bought it on the Bone Clones website or not. I think I must have bought it in an actual, like, retailer. Obviously not by Bone Clones, by some random shop. Really strange. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little review I did of the Tasmanian Devil Skull by Bone Clones. Bone Clones do fantastic replicas, they're osteological reproductions, you can go into their website, they've got some really cool stuff there. I personally love their fossil mammal skulls, such as this Denictus right here. Some really, really awesome things on there. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.